Hey everyone, this video is going to go over the PowerPoint in the week 8 module on drafting research papers. So I know all of you have taken Comp 2 if you're in this course. Um, so with Comp 1 and Comp 2, hopefully you have already learned about how to do research papers properly. But I wanted to just give you a quick reminder because at this point you're starting to work your way towards drafting the course project essay and at that point you're going to need to start incorporating the research you've been doing. Hopefully if you've completed project part two by now, uh, which you should have, um, you have found your sources but perhaps not really thought about how you're going to incorporate them yet. So that's why I want to just go through this quick PowerPoint just to give you some reminders um, before we get too much further in working on the rough draft for the course project essay. It's much easier to think about these things and incorporate these techniques as you're going instead of having to go back and do them. Right. Um, so the first thing you want to do is review your findings. If you've gone through your sources that you've picked or when you go through them, you know, um, you know, deepen your thinking on the topic, looking for uh, key discoveries, look for connections between your sources, what they're saying and how they're connected. Look for differences, right? Identify where there's limits or gaps in what your sources are saying. Um, and then imagine your paper. Imagine how you want the final product to come out. You can visualize it. Um, Anticipate how you might use the source material. You are required to have two to three sources that support your claim and at least one source that supports an opposing claim. How are you going to use that? You know, you've been required to get them. You're required to use them. But it's up to you to figure out how to use them. So think about that as you're reviewing the information that you have gotten from your sources. How are you actually anticipating using that information? How do you want it to show up in your essay, right? Um, at some point, whether it's with the rough draft or in the revision stage before you turn in the final draft, you have to work on making sure you have a really, really sharpened, focused thesis statement, right? Use rich, clear terms. Um, use qualifying terms when needed. Remember, we don't, we're not in the land of absolutes, right? So it's not that something always happens or something never happens or will definitely happen or will never happen. It's, you know, normally, often, usually, right? Okay. Um, it might seem as though you're weakening your argument with those qualifying terms, but as we've learned this term, you know, this quarter so far, they actually make your argument seem more reasonable and therefore the audience will be more willing to accept your claim, right? Um, use the opposition to help stress your idea. I know it seems counterintuitive to talk about what the opposition thinks, to even point out, to, you know, to concede where they make a good point. But again, um, you can deepen your own claim by adding in those opposing points of view. You can say, you know, you make a good point. However, this is how you're. This is why you're wrong. This is where you've missed the mark, right? Okay. Um, there are some slides there on sharpening your working thesis. Uh, we've got the original here on slide four. Um, an original, unrevised, unsharpened thesis statement. It says, in Alice Monroe's An Ounce of Cure, infatuation messes with the narrator's head so her life gets turned upside down. Well, okay. Infatuation messes with the narrator's head so her life gets turned upside down? That's very vague. Let's be sharper with it. While Alice Monroe's An Ounce of Cure tells a simple story of infatuation leading to confusion and trouble, the story is more importantly about the plots of life, the ways in which the narrator experiences life as a competing set of stories, romance, fairy tale, farce, 
none of which does justice to the complexity of real life. That is a super sharp, focused thesis statement. That's where you want to. That's where you want to go. That's the direction you want to go in. Um, so question your thesis. You know, if you have like looking at that original, you know, in what ways is the story primarily about infatuation? What kinds of trouble flow from the infatuation? What confusion? Um, what do you mean by the phrase "box of life" and where does it come from? You know, think about that and make sure that you have hit on exactly what you are trying to accomplish with your essay. Okay. Um, and then there's some other things that I can show you. I want to talk, so go to slide seven and talk about how to organize the essay and what not to do. <laughs> um, do not give me a high school hamburger essay. This is not a five paragraph essay. You are dealing with topics that will require much more explanation and exploration than just five paragraphs would, would do. Um, so you want well developed main points. Just because it's a main point doesn't mean it gets one paragraph. Again, we're dealing with complicated topics and we're trying to offer persuasive methods to convince our readers. So a main point might take three or four, maybe even five paragraphs to fully develop because you can't have a paragraph that's three pages long, right? Just because you're still on the same main point, you are dealing with different aspects of that main point. And each of those aspects should probably give its own paragraph. So don't give me five paragraphs. Give me a well-developed set of ideas. Do not give me information regurgitation. <laughs> you have to analyze and synthesize what, what you're incorporating from your sources. Um, don't just present data. Don't just give quotes. You have to incorporate it into your argument. And don't just give a series of source summaries. Um, don't just summarize the sources that you have incorporate important elements from those sources into the argument. Um, going to slide nine, talking more about your sources. So that's really what I wanted to go with this <laughs> um, Avoid strings of references and chunks of source material without your discussion or explanation or interpretation in between. You shouldn't have a quote or paraphrase from one source immediately followed by a quote or a paraphrase from another source. You need to be explaining each source every time you refer to it. Incorporate it into, because this is your argument, right? Those sources are simply there to offer a little more credibility to your argument to help uh, convince us a little more. But it is your argument, your thoughts, your ideas. So every time you refer to a source, you have to explain why. You have to explain the relevance of that information and how it fits into your argument. Okay? Don't offer entire paragraphs of source material, whether it's paraphrased or in a quote, and then just put a citation. Right? That, that makes your thinking completely disappear. Again, this is your argument. So you probably don't need huge chunks of source material anyway, but if for some reason you do, it should still be incorporated into your thoughts, your argument. Don't overload the essay with a lot of complex data and a lot of complex information without explaining it, without unpacking it. Um, that can lose readers right away. So if you're dealing with some complex um, information, make sure you're fully unpacking it and explaining it to the reader. Um, don't copy and paste big chunks of source material, even if it's cited correctly, because <laughs> um, then it's just going to be a patchwork of source material. Again, this is your argument. Use your sources only when it's really going to boost your point, right? Um, 
so your paper obviously is there to support your thesis, your claim. And you need a line of reasoning that is very carefully thought out and backed up by the evidence. That line of reasoning, as we've seen in sample essays that we've read, is typically carried out by well-developed paragraphs. Almost like each paragraph is a step in the line of reasoning. Each paragraph, remember, a good topic sentence that makes a point in support of your thesis statement. Whatever that paragraph is, it should somehow be relating to the claim you're making, or at least to the main point that you are currently discussing. Make sure that we know at the beginning of each paragraph how it's connected, right? Give us very good reasoned and detailed evidence. This is where you're going to elaborate on that topic sentence. Give us a concluding statement that sort of restates or emphasizes the point made in that paragraph, right? I guess basically what I'm trying to say here is while we are writing an essay of multiple paragraphs and the whole purpose is to support your claim in the beginning, your thesis statement, you don't want to forget the basic rules of good paragraph development because that is where the, the essay gets held together, right? Um, make sure that you're using your source material for the right reasons. Make sure that every time you use a source that it is there to deepen and develop your point, that it is there to support your point and your thinking that it's going to give you credibility, that it's going to bring your point to life, or that it's going to address a counter argument, right? Resist quotations, direct quotes, word for word. It's, I mean, yes, it's fine as long as you do the quotations and give a citation, but remember a quotation, direct word for word from a source, should only be used when there's just no better way to say it. <laughs> um, you want to, and you still need to make sure that you follow it up with interpretation and explanation, right? Don't assume that just because it's a quote that we're going to understand why that quote is being used in that moment. You still have to explain the relevance, right? Do your best to make sure you have smooth integration of your sources. Remember, a paragraph. Um, should very rarely begin or end with source material. Uh, I would say like 98% of the time, maybe 99% of the time, your paragraph should begin with your thoughts and end with your thoughts. The source material, if used in the middle of the paragraph, remember it's only there to help support your thought. So you have to start with your thought present the source material, explain the relevance of the source material, and then end with your thoughts, right? Um, so think about, you know, in review here, think about how you want this essay to come out. What do you want the final product to look like? What are you hoping to accomplish? What are you hoping your main points will be and how you're going to walk your reader, reader through your line of reasoning. Sharpen your working thesis statement. Even if you don't do that with the rough draft just yet, keep in mind that by the time you turn in the final draft, that thesis statement needs to be sharp and focused. Obviously, I'll take a look at the rough draft, so if you're still uh, not quite there, you know, you're going to get some advice from me. You're going to get some pointer from me. Um, consider how you want to organize the material, keeping in mind that your line of reasoning will highly dictate how you do that, um, and thinking about how your sources are going to fit into it. Uh, respect your sources, reason with your sources, and use them with purposeful intent and smooth integration. Um, so this is just a little review of how to handle your sources as you present your own arguments. This is not, I don't care what, what other people have already said about your topic. I want you to present your argument. The sources are simply there to back up what you're saying. It's not about the sources. It is about your argument, your thoughts.
So take control, present your argument, feel confident that you can present a valid, well-supported argument and that the sources are secondary to your thoughts, okay? Um, if you have any questions about any of the information in the PowerPoint, and especially if you start to have any questions as you begin drafting and incorporating your sources, please get in touch with me. Yes, I'm going to look at your rough draft, so there is that, but feel free to come to me even before that if you have questions or need some advice, okay? Um, otherwise, you guys are free to move on to the next item in the module.